Pleasure of love. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan. Night of Ramadan. Ramadan Mubarak, and welcome to Ramadan Reminders. I'm Yusuf Estes, and for this program, this episode, I want to talk about something real important, the importance of being together. You know, it's nice as a Muslim to be able to get off by yourself sometimes and think about Allah and think about His creation, think about the Jannah, but then there's times when we really need to be together with each other. A lot of times people ask me, they'll say, what is your favorite city? What is your favorite uh, place to be here or the favorite country? And they'll expect me to say something like the desert of Saudi Arabia, which is very nice, by the way. But my favorite place to be is in Cairo, Egypt. Or my favorite place is New York City. Or Los Angeles. Or Istanbul. Or Tokyo. And if you said, why? Because that's where the people are. I love people. I want to be with people. If they're Muslims, I want to be with them because they believe in Allah. If they're not Muslims, I want to talk to them about Allah. But either way, I want to be together. Together. Because if we only focus on just ourselves, this is just like one, isn't it? And if we focus on just one or two others, a few, you know, and it's not really a union here. But when we all get together, Muslims, non-Muslims, and be together for what is good, you'll be surprised at the amazing things that can happen. And I highly encourage us to continue the good things of our Ramadan by taking this out after Ramadan is over and sharing with other people. Now, what I'm talking about here is, of course, Ramadan is over, the shaitan is loose again, and he's going to be all over everybody and everything trying to make up for the lost time of Ramadan. <laughs> so why don't we work on some of the things, the tips that we picked up in Ramadan, some of the good things that happened to us, the good feelings we had, and let's carry it out, take it out of this month and into the next month of Shoal. And in the next month, and the next, and into the month of Dhul Hijjah, so we can maybe get to go do Hajj and talk about that with other people. Who knows? Maybe we'll have a website called uh, performhajj.com. It's a good idea. Check that out. All of this together, though, is really a basis of Islam, is doing things together. When we come together for Salah, it's important for us to realize the Imam is telling us oh, it means for us to be steadfast, to be straight up, to, you know, straighten the line and be, you know, establishing this together. And when we do Salah, how should we be? Like, say this is the line, you know, here's the Muslims lined all up and the Imam is out in front of everybody and he says the, the takbir and he said, okay, you know, and he does ruku and then the Muslims are like, uh, like this. That's not right. When the Imam says, Allahu Akbar, and he goes to the ruku, all the Muslims should go together, yeah? So we should move like one hand, one hand in the salah. And in the same way, we should work together for all of the things about Islam so that we make mashura, as we talked about in other parts of the program, and we follow our Imams and we work together as one hand or one union like this. And the more we do this, the more Allah will love it and the more re reward He will give us. Some brothers will argue and tell you, well, no, I don't want to be with the non-Muslims. Well, I don't want to be with the evil that anybody does. So if you're talking about the evil of what some non-Muslims do, totally and completely I agree with you. But if you're just saying I don't want to be with non-Muslims at all, that my Islam tells me so and so and so, about that, I'm going to tell you that that's not the Islam of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because even up until he died, he was always concerned about non-Muslims because he wanted them to know the message. And how would they know if somebody didn't take the message to them? And that's what he ordered his companions to do. Some of them had to go out and spread the message of Islam. He sent Muad ibn Jabal down to Yemen to be the governor down there and told him, 
how to give this message to them. He told him that when you go, you're going to the people of the book, the al Kitab. Teach them, he said, teach them about Tawheed, monotheism. And if they accept that, then teach them about the Salah. And if they accept that, then teach them about the Zakah. This is crucial. It's critical. It's something important that we always remember to work with all the people. And we're cooperating together with everybody. One of the things that's important, too, to remember is that we all came from Adam. Adam is my grandfather, but he's your grandfather, and he's her grandfather, and he's his grandfather. Adam is the grandfather of all of us. We're all children, children of Adam. And in this way, we could look at each other and say, you know what? I care about this person because he's also one of the children of Adam. It doesn't mean we're all brothers and sisters in faith, but certainly we're all brothers and sisters in the fact that we're human beings on the same planet. We do have common interests. Maybe not everybody's interested in Allah, and maybe not everybody wants to be a Muslim, and that's very true. But we're still interested in some good things that can be done, whether they do it for money and we do it for Allah, or they're doing it to get recognition and we're doing it to get rewards for Jannah. This is not really the subject. The subject here is, let us work together for whatever is good. Because whoever is working for good, whether it be for this dunya or for the akhir, there is going to be some benefit for somebody in that. But whoever is working for evil, then for sure, in the next life and here, there's going to be something bad with that. And there's something too to remember in Islam, that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu peace be upon him, he taught us a very valuable lesson when he was talking about how some people will do bad things, aggression, dhulam. Let me use the Arabic word, dhulam. This is what he was talking about. He said, help your brother in dhulam, whether he's being oppressed. I'm going to use the word oppression in English in this case. Whether he's being oppressed or if he's the oppressor. Now, some of the companions said, whoa, hold on a second. We understand the first part. That's clear. You know, if somebody's, you know, oppressing our brother, acting aggressively against him, yes, we should help him, defend him, get him out of the circumstance. But what about when he's the oppressor? How can we help him if he's an oppressor? And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, stop him. <laughs> and that's the best way to help him. If he's the oppressor, stop him from it. So this is clear. And if you apply that, generally, you can see the same is true with all human beings that are out here. Something that's really bad and hated to Allah is dhulm. So when we see anything wrong, we're supposed to work hard and strive against it. Stopping it with our hand, stopping it with our tongue by speaking out against it, or stopping it, uh, at least hating it anyway, with all our heart, and this is the weakest level of faith. These are just some of the reminders that I wanted to talk about in this episode, but the most important thing of all is not to be opposing each other, but to be working with each other. And may Allah accept this from all of us. That's our reminder for today, and don't forget the website. It's called RamadanReminders.com. Till next time, Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. See you tomorrow. Inshallah. Oh, you who believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah. The pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan. Night of Ramadan.